up that last part. Um, are we coordinating with Mark or anyone in terms of that level of response? Because I, as somebody who works in an office that you would probably contact, right? Um, we've not heard anything about that supply chain issue yet. Um, and that's pretty concerning because my guess is that it's if it's hitting us, it's going to hit our rural communities next. And it's just going to be a ripple effect that we're not, we've not necessarily heard of yet. No, we haven't. We, um, we've been going and reaching every resource we can to try to secure as much as we can. First, um, we drove to Sam's and Liberty yesterday because we could get 150 Uncrustables. That's nothing to the total, but it meant 150 more lunches today. Um, so we're trying to just find every resource and turn over every rock before we go there. But Jordan, that's that's what he's doing now as he's working on, okay, we need to tell you what kind of help we need in case there are others who have resources. We have reached out to a couple of college cafeterias to say, do you have some box cereal? What do you have that we could put in Ziploc bags instead of, you know, the little peel off tops to see if, you know, colleges and dorms might have some stuff left over. Uh, I'll be able to give you a little more insight on that later in the week as to how, how successful we are with some of those, but you're absolutely right that our next step needs to be to go to social agencies. And if, and if there's a regulatory fix that could help with some of those funding issues, right? That's mm -hmm. something too that we should know about because we've got another fourth round of stimulus that's potentially coming and we can right some of those wrongs, but we'd have to do that pretty quickly. Okay. I'll share some stuff with you on that. Uh, it makes, makes total sense. Thank you for that, for that input. Um, and then I think uh, the, the, the other piece that I had was just around, um, you know, our communication and what we're continuing to do. And Kelly, I don't know if you all have had an opportunity to go to the website to look at some of the uh, recent updates. I, I did mention to you all earlier about Spectrum Channel 18 and that looking at that as a possibility after, uh, you know, having a chance to talk to Marla a little bit further and forgot that I had this conversation with her earlier. We may not take that uh, that route because the concern is it goes back again to, OK, this is it becomes more of a have versus a have not situation. Everybody's not going to be touched. Everybody doesn't have cable. Um, one of the things I would love for us to figure out, and I, I shared this with Dr. Shepard and um, Kelly is probably hearing this for the first time. Are there possibilities that we could get some time on PBS? Everybody has PBS as a free channel. Uh, I don't know. But I think we can look into that as a potential option for being able to have some available uh, schooling, you know, on, on a local station that everybody would be able to have access to. So we're, we're still looking into those those different uh, ways of, of trying to reach our community from an instructional standpoint. But I didn't want to over promise on that spectrum piece. And I'm not going to say it's 100 percent off the table, but right now. You know, I think we need to talk further about what does that mean and how many people can we actually touch with those efforts. And then the um, the only other thing that I have is just the communication piece. And uh, Kelly, I just want to give the board a quick update on that. Yes, so our next um, bite sized chunks of information that will be going out will regard the um, hotspot and Chromebook deployment for our middle school and K through six or K through eight um, students. We're really gonna work to do that with our principals so that our students are getting principal communication that we're helping them write, um, going directly to our families about device or Chromebook or um, hotspot pickup. So that's our next piece of information. Also working with Linda, to make sure we're being um, communicative about our food distribution sites and availability here in the next week, two weeks, that we're updating those on a regular basis as well. And like Dr. Bedell said, our website's being updated in real time. I encourage you to check that in and direct people to our website for real-time information. And our KCPS in Espanol has also been um, updated and shared with our public as a great resource for all the information in Spanish. So. Along with that, we're working with language services to make sure that all of those folks who have our um, Burmese, our other language families, 
um, we'll be sending direct messages to those families in their language with the help of language services. So that's kind of a new addition that we've added in the last couple of days to make sure that those families are getting information in their language. And then the final thing is just making sure that as a marketing lens and communication lens, we're highlighting the work of our teachers and our kids right now. So what does some video work look like around um, what our teachers are doing currently? We're working on that for our social platforms coming up here pretty quickly. And I know too, also tomorrow, just to make sure that you all are aware, I'll be on um, KCUR's, is it, is it uh, no, what is it, up to date tomorrow? What is it tomorrow? Um, KCPT with Nick Haynes, Dr. Bedell, you and um, Dr. White from Blue Valley will be the two soups um, talking about all of the education related items related to COVID right now. Dr. Bedell, quick question. Yes and it's pertaining to the communications to the families and the language services, and I really appreciate that. I didn't know if, um, however you approach that, obviously, I think some board members, several board members have had questions about making sure those families don't feel intimidated by accessing uh, food and other services, that it doesn't somehow expose them. So making them feel comfortable as we go through this crisis that can be you know, causing everyone to feel more anxious. So making sure that it feel they understand it and they feel comfortable in that and that they're not somehow put at risk by using these services. Yeah, I, I think you're 100% correct. And I, 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 if Linda had just given some numbers a few minutes ago, the massive upticks that we've had in providing food services have come over in the Northeast community, East and Northeast High School, those sites have uh, seen seen a tremendous amount of uptick with families showing up. So I, I do want to assure you all that, they, you know, I think the first week there was a little bit of, of hesitancy and it was it was kind of slow, but it, it picked up this week. Mm -hmm. I would also say, Ms. Mansur, that that had a lot to do with personal phone calls from counselors and teachers to some of those families really ensuring them that it was safe, it was something that they could come and trust us to do. So, sorry, my kids are in the background outside on the trampoline. <laughs> um, but just, to, yeah, those personal conversations between our counselors and teachers really helped and our principals to really help that up, up to, uptick in our numbers. Thank you. And I know, uh, Dr. Shepard, just one final thing for this update that I also received we the question came up around um the, the question came up um just around the teacher levels of uh comfort um with you know going more virtual and i know you had kind of talked a little bit about your level of comfort last week to where you are now and where we actually see um the evolution of our teachers so i didn't know if you want to just give a quick update on that that question that came up I thank you. Are you mute? Are you on mute? Yeah, you're muted, Marla. Oh, okay. Sorry. One of the um, one of the things that we did today was we looked at some of the opportunities that we're providing for them, and again, we have layers upon layers of opportunity. I will tell you though, they do have to reach out and they have to participate in opportunities that are out there. Um, I was very uncomfortable at first in a lot of areas. And I have actually reached out and I've been getting professional development every day because I realized that this is a pretty big curve, a pretty steep curve. And so that's why we put it out there every day. But these are just some of the things here that we've done. On Monday, uh, March 23rd, every school, um, it was a teacher work day, half teacher work day, half teacher PD day. And um, we made sure that every teacher had access to the Google Classroom professional development that we already had made up from previously. And so every teacher was allowed to get in on that platform so that they could learn um, Google Classroom and any other um, platform that they felt like they needed to know. Then on March the 23rd, they were assigned a digital learning mentor. I call it um, a, di a champion a digital champion, but um, our digital learning team calls it a digital learning mentor, and they provide support in the building, and all of them know who they're building. Now, some buildings have two, and then maybe a couple of buildings have three because of their large numbers, but we've made sure that every building has at least one. 
Then on Thursday and uh, Friday, March 26th and 7th, um, the DLT and three mentors conducted district PD over digital learning platforms. We had over 200 teachers attending. So I do want you to know that teachers are participating. We're seeing more and more every single day participate in what we're doing. Um, this week, um, we've given them PD over RAS kids. Um, and then we've given the men the mentors are giving um, PD on class dojo. Some of our teachers, we're giving them options. You've got dojo, you've got RAS kids, you've got Google Classroom, um, you've got Seesaw. All of those are, are different mediums that we are providing professional development on so that they can actually access what we're doing here. And by the time the kids get the devices, they can be prepared to teach and do whatever they need to do. Um, we do a weekly PD schedules um, that CIPD puts on and Ryan and Aaron, which who are a math specialist, they actually do. I mean, all the time they're doing Envision 2.0. We just adopted Vision to Envision 2.0 last year. And it, it has been an excellent tool because a lot of it's actually great for this time period that we're in, because a lot of what you do in um a lot of what you do in um, Envision 2.0, I'm, I'm homeschooling, please excuse the noise, I'm homeschooling in addition to, <laughs> I mean, um, it's rough, okay, so. You better call the principal, Dr. Shepard. Call the principal. <laughs> Oh, I got a principal, all right. <laughs> I, I won't use them while I'm on this call. But um, anyway, uh, but um, that that tool that we adopted has been perfect for this because our kids, once they get their devices, they'll be able to use that touch screen and the manipulatives on the touch screen. So it's going to be great. Um, we we've, we've responded to hundreds of emails and phone calls from teachers. Um, communicating with each building administrator and I mean we have regular meetings this is a lot more um, complex than I would have ever imagined it to be and we are um, we're putting a lot out there for our teachers and so if they have challenges they have a lot of people they can reach out to they can reach out to their principal who can reach out to us they can reach out to their digital learning mentor in their school um, they can reach out to another grade level teacher because there are grade level teachers in every building that are actually being trained they can reach out to um, our, our coordinators, which they are doing a fabulous job, and we are actually keeping the log of all of the calls that we are taking. And so we are getting a lot of volume right now, and we know that that will probably decrease over the next couple of weeks once they feel comfortable with it. And once our kids get the devices, um, it, it may pick up now for the on the side of the kids and the parents um, and less so for the teachers is what we're thinking and what we're hoping so that we can make sure that we balance our support and both parties and both portions of um, the teacher and the student will be able to navigate these uncharted waters. Thank you for that update, Dr. Shepard. All right, so that actually concludes the update that I have at this point. I know we'll be back on the um, with the, I, I don't know if it was Friday a day. I, I don't know that I'll have anything. Well, Friday stays away. I don't know that I'm going to have much to have Dr. by Dr. Friday, Dr. but I know we're back on our, with the, with yeah, the board. Our on next to, meeting, to, our next update, unless you need to have um, orders of action from us, our next update is scheduled for next week. Oh, at okay. The, at the very beginning of our 4.30 executive session, so we right now, the, the meetings are just on every single Wednesday unless you say, I believe I'm going to have to take action on something and I'm going to need the board um, to do a call. If that is the case, if you think something might happen for Friday, we would have to notice the meeting tomorrow. All right. And right now it doesn't look like it, but I do have one thing I do want everybody to think about. And I know that we uh, we may have some additional guests on the call. I want to say hi to Andrea because uh, I let her I know I let her in earlier. I hope she's still on. But um, one of the things that I do want, I want us to really start thinking about. And I, and I don't know if I said this last week is really begin to think about if this is long term and there's no return back to school. I think there are, I've, I've been on a been on a call with 
um, St. Superintendents over on the St. Louis side of, of the state and also in the central area of the state. And I think all of us are planning as if there potentially may not be an opportunity to return. Uh, and if it is, we'll be ready to get fired back up. But I do think that um, we have to make those decisions. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I thought I heard the commissioner say today that there are already three districts in the state that have made the decision to shut down for the rest of the remainder of the year. I don't know. I didn't know. You know, I don't know what districts that 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 have made that decision. But I do want you all to know that that is something that I had to push the commissioner on when we had our advisory council meeting two days ago or yesterday where I said to her, you know, at what point do we we, we you know, help ease some anxiety with our community around what's actually going to happen here um, rather than if we know right now that we're hearing that there's going to be a significant uptick with the number of people who will be hospitalized during that between that May 4th and potentially through the end of May. Um, you know, I just don't see how and I know there's a lot of estimates out here, but every time I look at the news, we're over 200,000 now in the country and the number is steady going up. Um, so I just want us to be thinking in terms of that. And if we get to a position where we're looking at the numbers in Jackson County and we need to go ahead and, and make a decision, you know, of course, that would have to be done through the board taking action. But it is something that we need to be thinking about. Um, Thank you, Dr. Dr. Bedell, I actually have a question related to that for for your team to consider for our next discussion. OK, and that is. At, I, I, I understand that it's easy to look at what's what are the detriments involved with not reopening the schools, but are there you know, does does a decision earlier than later create some opportunity for your team to have stronger strategies for teaching and learning or reinforcement? You know, at, at what point does the uncertainty become more of a hindrance than a than a help? That's the comment that I made to the commissioner yesterday. Right. Because I think for us, it's better that we know because then it makes it easier on us to go ahead and be able to plan through because we got a 100 percent confirmation. OK, we're not coming back. So now let's how do we make sure that we 100 percent move forward with the embracing of, of virtual schooling? And knowing that there may not be any interruptions in that until potentially when we have to come back in April, in August, when it's time to come back for the beginning of the school year. And so I, here's what I will tell you. In our conversations with Kenny Southwick and a number of the area superintendents, we are, from a Kansas region standpoint, having a deep conversation about, OK, if we're not going to get action from the governor, we're not going to get action from our commissioner. And they keep saying we want to leave it up to you all locally. You know, we don't want to be in a situation where we're going at this alone. But I, I did say, you know, I think for us, we 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 know that we feel like we're good at how we're progressing and making sure that even though the schools are closed, we're going to have solid plans and supports in place for our families that I don't think that I don't anticipate and none of the other superintendents also anticipate that their that their board members will say, nah, we need to just keep it open. And so I, I, I think to your point, it, it needs to happen sooner rather than later if we're going to make that decision. So our families can at least know here's the here's where it is. Here's here's the ultimatum. But here's the plans for, from the district, you know, to continue to work with our families through that May 21st date or 22nd date. When, when we were supposed to conclude school in the first place. Okay, well, thank you. And then, and then I would just add to that, just know that you've got support from your board. If, look, I won't speak for every board member. I know there are multiple of us that would support that decision if it comes down and if you need to make it, you know, unilaterally or with the cooperating school districts, however that decision's made, um, you, you have our support. Thank you all. Yes. And Dr. Bedell, I think just thinking through the timing for that. So as you all start to continue to have your conversations, if you think that's something that um, we need to take action on, I mean, again, we've got and we have a regular board meeting next week. Um, but if you need action sooner, 
we have the capacity to call a meeting. We want to do what we can to um, respect um, Sunshine Laws, but just be thinking ahead so that we can support you. And we can, and we can be a leader in all of this. I think the big thing is I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, you hear, you hear Kelly back there with her kids, Dr. Shepard, I'm certain we'll see with her kids. And then I, I got the three here and, you know, trying to, trying to just make sure that, that we're keeping things as stable as possible for them. Uh, knowing that, okay, even though you're home, these, you know, there's structure and wanting to make sure that we, that we've done everything, you know, in a very proactive manner for our families so that they, you know, cause the news is going to depress some people. Um, and, but if we know that we already have a lot of stuff in place to support these families and our teachers are fully ready to move forward with, uh, you know, be embracing this virtual piece, um, I think it, it, it becomes a pill that can be digestible, uh, you know, because we, we have given people a heads up that this is where we're going. So I will continue to keep you all posted on that as we have our conversations. And I did share with the superintendents that I wanted to bring that up to you all this evening and then get back with them around, hey, this this is the, you know, the body shared it with my board and, and kind of planted the seed and, and you know, we have to move, we will. Dr. Bedell, this is Mark Wasserstrom. One of the things that I would appreciate would be a presentation going over the various uh, approaches to distance learning. I have done some studying on my own about the MOCAP program and what's provided in the statutes and some of the regulations. I tried to call and talk to the head of distance learning down in Springfield. I made two calls and nobody ever called me back. I'm sure they have a busy program to take care of without bothering people uh, in Kansas City, but I understand that they're pioneering some great work down in Springfield. And then we have the virtual program, and I don't really know the history of why Kansas City decided to go off on its own rather than following the state program, which is much more extensive. But I think that everybody is working together and coming to the point where we're accepting distance learning, whereas very recently the Missouri School Board Association was putting out uh, pieces discouraging distance learning because it was supposedly playing into the hands of charter schools. But I don't understand. Apparently, there's a great deal of activity and work that's been going on for quite some time. And I can't find a place where I can get a good overview of all of it. And perhaps if you put together uh, with the staff of KCPS a presentation for the board, it would help us understand uh, more what we have to work with when we're talking about distance learning for the coming year. I thought that we did a presentation for the board with Christy Harrison at one of our monitoring uh, uh, meetings. And I also believe that she came into one of our executive sessions and presented on it. I, I, I think I've shared with you all, we're going through, we're utilizing the launch program in Springfield. Um, and that's, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm not looking to move to another vendor right now as far as that's concerned we feel very pleased with that I, I was just on the phone with the springfield superintendent um there's also been conversation around uh us taking a look at how do we move launch into the into the primary years as a possible option so that's that's kind of the conversation that we're having right now given everything that's going on how do we move this now from the high school level uh into the elementary level if you know this so that you know this this situation doesn't become the uh it won't be the new norm so to say because we we're very prepared for it that's great okay dr Bell, one final thing i just want to applaud you um and your team in this effort um as you undertake the response to COVID-19, because obviously in a world full of leaders who aren't leading, 
um, some have to, right? And you and your team are certainly um, taking the actions necessary to move things forward and support our kids and our, our staff. Um, the one thing I would encourage you to do is continue to be creative um, because in this um, situation creates a lot of opportunity. And um, folks, I don't think, realize um, the abilities they have in these moments um, to leverage their positions to, to solve some, some long-term problems here. So um, as these stimulus things come out, I know we had talked about potential um, uh, spending opportunities, but I mean, the same with regulations, right? I mean, we're changing all types of regs right now. And so uh, keep all those things in mind as you move forward because the creativity side is how we're solving a lot of these problems. And I think Rita had mentioned um, to me directly about um, the possibility of, of uh, military meals, um, which could be a great um, solution as to a, a way to supplement our food issue. Um, but it's things like that that we can then go chase as um, elected officials' offices and and come up with common solutions. So, um, you know, continue to to be creative in those spaces. And I will say this uh, well stated because, um, as I've said to the cabinet, and we we met with we probably had about. 25 people on our on our cabinet call on uh, Monday, and one of the things we said was, in the midst of, of of being you know of just the fear of everything that's going on in the unknown, um, there are this is a great opportunity for us to be extremely progressive, um, and honestly we'll have a lot of grace. Not I said not only will we have grace from the board and patience, we'll have a lot of grace and patience from the community. Because I think everybody's just sitting here like, hey, man, we nobody ever thought that we would be in this type of position. And so we actually have, I think, a phenomenal opportunity to be bold and to have a level of forgiveness. But to be bold in trying to advance our system, um, I think this is also going to put us in a phenomenal position from a marketing standpoint. I promise you, um, because we are we are, we have as a district been out here leading a lot of these efforts. The main thing that I've had to say to people is, you know, everybody's, you know, coming to the district saying, can the district help with this? Can the district help with that? And I'm having to tell people, let's not forget that we have charters that have almost 50 percent of the students in this city and they get an MOU that gives them fair funding across the board. So, you know, the, all of the burden shouldn't have to be on KCPS, you know, in terms of whether it's Wi-Fi hotspots, or the instructional stuff that we're doing, everybody's kind of got to have their teeth in it. But people really, I think, uh, respect what we're already doing and how we've been leading in this. And I heard that uh, from from Gwen Grant around how some people have been feeling about the the how the district has stepped up, and even how, like I said, you all are coming together to vote on that emergency stuff that we needed is a number of superintendents say, how were you able to execute that? I say, well, my board moved aside policy and that allowed for us to get at the top of the list to get those hotspots because they were able to take action within 24 hours. So I bet, you know, so I said, those are the things that you guys need to do if you, you know, you want to try to really move your system forward. So I do thank you all. And that that's well stated. Can I add one thing? I've been really yes. quiet. <laughs> um, <laughs> With the creativity and the progressiveness, I think one of the areas I'd really like to see specifically since the testing has been suspended, the accreditation's been suspended, and I know we're going to just focus on, I think if I understood correctly, the standards that we have already covered and that we'll be going over those to maintain and be consistent. This is an opportunity for us to, because otherwise, our, I think all students K through 12 will start to get bored with learning. But this is such an opportunity to not have that happen, to have them show us in other ways how they understand the content. Um, and I think it will pay off dividends on the other side of this when we do go back. If, if students really do have other creative ways to show us that what, what what they already know, but um, so that's the part I'm actually kind of more excited about than anything is walking away a little bit for a bit from standardized testing and the yeah. this is the only way to show you know what you know. We know our students are so much more creative than that. And so um, I'm hoping that this is an opportunity this last, you know, no matter what happens, you know, if we end up just coming out of this at the end of April or all the way through the end of the semester, finding other ways to help 
students learn how to learn and engage in the content in ways that are meaningful to them that show us they know what we've taught them. And that's why, Ms. Wolfsey, I really appreciated the commissioner making the comment today, or it wasn't commissioner, it was the assistant uh, uh, commissioner, Dr. Neal, where he said, you know, there are many ways that you can measure progress of students, right? And that's, like he said, the competency-based piece, projects, you know, he said, you guys can be flexible, you can be innovative, and 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 maybe this is an opportunity because we are in the, in the p- position where we're doing a lot of reviewing, where you, you also want to see the style of your educators kind of surface. This is an opportunity to see that. And, and then for Kelly to be able to get from both sides how students are viewing instruction differently, but how our teachers are viewing instruction differently. And there are some teachers who have run away with it because I could tell you all three of my kids have at various points during this week been on virtual with their teachers been on virtual and I and like literally I'm I'm seeing the lessons and all of that stuff that's taking place for all three of them and for my daughter because they suspended the IB exams right they she still has an opportunity without taking the IB exam to be awarded the full IB diploma but it's all based on their work products and not them having to take that in, end of year assessment Yes, yes. I, I love that point, Miss We'll see. We're working on a podcast with some students, too, to talk about their learning during this time um, and what their reflections are on how they're learning differently or similarly to how they have previously. So whether it's podcast, video, we have some student quotes prepared for some social posts. So, yeah, all over that, just, again, trying to find the real benefit and the flexibility is something that we're really intrigued by. Last thing I'll say about this, um, because I'm smiling right now because my wife showed me a text message from um, this senior at Lincoln, and she is actually going to TCU next year to play basketball. And um, she said, you know, basically she woke up and said, you know, every day my mom wakes me up earlier and earlier as if we have some place to go. And if she wakes me up earlier again, like we got something to do, I'm just going to go crazy. And her, and her mother happens to be one of the coaches in the school district. And then I saw another one where the, the students were talking about they really enjoy being able to learn this way. But what's probably the best thing for them is, you know, that the lunch is better, you know, because they get, I guess, get to prepare lunch from home. So that was pretty funny, man. But, but we're already starting to get some things from the students around their experiences uh, with this uh, virtual learning. Thank you so much, Dr. Vidal. Uh, so all right. We have come to the conclusion of our of our time a little bit past, and we know that we'll have an update next week, but board members can also send in questions to you that they want to make sure that are top of mind for them for, for next week. And it sounds like you heard a lot of thoughts and ideas from the board at this point for today's call. Thank you all. My, my laptop's about to die. I don't charge it three times today. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Bedell and team. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Multiple people are now exiting.